Well, the presidency has refuted claims by Senator Abdul Mingi uh, from uh, PDP, uh, representing Bauchi Central, that President Bola Tinubu was implementing two versions of the 2024 budget. In a press statement issued by the Special Advisor, Information and Strategy to the President, uh, Mr. Bayo Ononuga, on Sunday, the presidency described Senator Ningi's allegations as completely untrue. He clarified that President Tinubu presented a 27.5 trillion naira budget proposal to the National Assembly in November 2023, not 25 uh, trillion naira as claimed by Senator Ningi. Now, he further clarified that the National Assembly, exercising its power of appropriation, increased the proposed budget to 28.7 trillion naira before passing it into law. But the President, uh, Tinubu, then signed the revised version of the budget into law on January 1st, 2024. Now, do recall that uh, Northern Senators Forum um, uh, put in down allegations that the 2024 budget was padded and uh, they plan to meet with President Bola Tinubu alongside the Senate President, um, Senator Akpabio, uh, on this. And uh, they are alleging that there is a 3 trillion naira insertion in the 2024 budget. Now, the chairman of uh, the forum, Senator Abdul Ningi, uh, disclosed this in, uh, in an interview uh, granted to uh, BBC Alsa Service. Now, he alleges that what the Senate debated and passed as budget for 2024 was 25 trillion naira, not 28 trillion naira being implemented. Well, Ninki said the firm would probe the uh, added sum of 3 trillion naira inclusion in the budget. And uh, he also did say that um, certain experts are looking into the budget and uh, that they can see the damage done to the north. Oh, well, interesting conversation here. Well, uh, we do have um, with us in the studio Mr. Akin Fatunke and... Uh, Joining us virtually, we have a uh, barrister Henry Akine, who is uh, a, a humanitarian lawyer and also a public affairs commentator. Well, I must say, very welcome to you, barrister Henry, if he's joined the conversation already. Well, big welcome to you. And also, uh, I understand that uh, um, uh, John Akrelia might be joining this conversation as well. Oh, well. Let's start with uh, Mr. Akin Fatunke. Now, this coming from a senator, we know what was published in the papers. I don't know what I read was 27.5 trillion, and then it was pushed up by uh, 1.2 addition into the budget uh, before it was approved. But having this coming from a member of the Senate, what do you think this aims to achieve? Well, basically, what are your thoughts before I talk about what this aims to achieve? Well, you just might include that in your thoughts. And the North also complaining. They have been complaining for a long time now. Thank you very much, Moses. Uh, I, I, was, I was giggling. Um, you said a senator not just a senator, high-ranking mm. senator, Abdul Ningi, mm. uh, PDP Bauchi. Uh, look, let's call out the chase. This is unfortunate. Even if it is true. But it is not true. I don't think it is true. I followed the budget process uh, and the ruling party insisting that we are going to go the tradition of January to December and all MBAs and um, ministries made presentations. We all went through it. And if you recall, Moses, just before then, we had a supplementary budget mm -hmm. that we were all talking about. Why would you need a supplementary budget to... Begin to buy cars for yourselves. It was a mum. Hmm? It was like mum 
at that time. Why would you need a supplementary budget to begin to buy cars and then refurbish houses? Why would that uh, be uh, a priority? Again, mom, you know, like they say, when you are eating on the table, you do not talk because it is rude. I am disturbed. Okay. I am disturbed at the quality. I am disturbed about the intellectual rigor and capacity that can make a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to come out in March to be talking about padding for a budget that was passed on the 1st of January. On 1st of January, hurriedly passed, I dare say. In fact, Moses commentators now came and said President Balatinungu was so much in a hurry to pass. Well, I can see from what Onoduga is saying. And in the presence of you know, compromise, he has decided to sign that into law. What we are seeing is pure, sheer politics okay. coming from that part of the country. Okay, you think that's that part is. of the country has All right. now okay. ceded presidency to the South. All right, let's and so this is about the second time... No, no. The first one was issued with the central bank governor, who was going to try and bring efficiency into regulations, and they not All right, let's, shouted. Let's, let's get, uh, let's get This is the, the second one that we are seeing. Let's get and the views it's, of it's marks of unfortunate politics, I dare say. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Let's get the views of uh, some of our, our guests. We have uh, Barista Eze Eluche joining us. Well, I need to be certain that uh, Barista Henry Akine has also joined this conversation. In the meantime, um, let's... Uh, Barista Eze, good morning to you. Uh, welcome. Yes, okay, good. Uh, let me stay with uh, Barista Eze Luce. Uh, let me get your thoughts on this one. Is the possibility... What is the possibility of um, the government of the day uh, tinkering with two different budgets? Is that even, is that even a theme? All right, we, we, we can't exactly hear you clearly. Um, there's uh, a little bit of a challenge there. All right, so uh, let's go to Barista Henry Ekine, who joins us virtually as well. You are a humanitarian lawyer. Uh, well, go ahead. What are your thoughts on this one? It's not the uh, the mean same uh, blockage that is affecting our network this morning, mm -hmm. but anyway, we're we're having a bit of a challenge getting uh, uh, the the views of our guests there. But uh, I will have to continue this 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 conversation with uh, Mr. Fatunke, and then our engineers will work on fixing that one so we can get the views of. The that we have. All right, that's that. That just feels like heavy breathing into the microphone. But Mr. King, while you were talking, you were of the opinion that uh, it is more like a political, you know, a statement kind of coming from the the, the senator representing Bauchi Central. It, it, it is political. Now, it's political statement. Now, now, don't you actually look at it this way? Maybe because I, according to what was. <laughs> down the the senate on their own out of their own magnanimity decided to increase the budget from 27.5 to 28 point now don't you think actually that the senate must have what they agreed on wasn't what happened you know because i i believe in myself that mr Nengi was a senate a member not just a member of the senate now a high-ranking one who happened to be the leader of the forum of the northern uh, senators now don't you think actually maybe there was another meeting held without some people that actually led to uh this issue we're having now him coming out to talk about what they agreed on what was presented to them before the new one of 28.7 Fina, as much as I, I, I wish I can bend backwards and accommodate and say anything is possible in Nigeria, that doesn't look 
feasible. I do not personally consider the Tenth Senate or even the Ninth Senate, the National Assembly as, as a total, as um, a branch of a tree that I want to perch on in terms of um, some of the things I need to see. But I will not say because of that, and then just cut the branch and then begin to go to the roots. I don't think it is possible. The process of appropriation is laid out. The lane was in, in the presence of Abdul Ningi and the Northern Senators. We didn't hear fab. Nigerians at that time were groaning and saying, you cannot. It is not a priority for you to be buying SUVs. Abdul Ningi and co. kept seeing mute. I just feel, in my honest opinion, is that um, this is the hand of Esau and voice of Jacob that is messed in politics. And the politics is such that President Bola Tinubu got into office and some of his policies that is affecting everybody in terms of say we need to correct certain things is hitting is hitting some elites in the north elsewhere and so what then do we do well the horse has bolted from the barn so let's see what it is that we can just begin to say and then you begin to now then say the budget is not favoring the north oh come on uh, it, 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 it's marks of a lot of mischief now. If I told you that the whole thing is a process, Fina, you are the Senate president, and all of us are on this table agreeing certain things. Okay, between you and David, because the two of you are lighter than me and, and, and Moses, you have now agreed to go represent us, and then you decide to put 1.5 uh, trillion. And two of us kept quiet. Then four, five months later, Moses now began to say that uh, that is not what we agreed with. Has Moses come back to you? That is the process. Hey, wait a minute. Something is funny. I, I am not sure. Um, what, I have to what speak. What is the danger of this assertion, um, especially looking at um, the volatility of the North. What is the danger of this statement that the North is being sidelined? It's not the first time this is coming. I would have, I would have loved to get uh, Barista Ezeliche's view on this one, but until we rectify that, but let me stay, stay with you. Listen, it's not the first time. You do remember um, Najatu Mohammed, uh, convener. I think she was a former APC campaign director. The civil society organization uh, who was said to have resigned well she said she resigned her, her, her position but the apc said uh, she she was sacked but she cried out just before elections that uh, the president has no blueprint for insecurity in the north the president has no nothing for 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 the north and we know that during campaign the president actually was you know he was he was all for the north he spent more time campaigning in the north now for the northern senators i mean i would like to believe senator ningi was speaking for the um, senators from from the north uh, for them to say that great damage is being done to the north from within the budget mm. and that the, the north is being sidelined and also that there is a possibility that uh, this presidency is implementing two different budgets. What is the impl implication of this? This presidency is not, you know, uh, operating two budgets. You know, so please let's put that under the table. Yes, um, if you are talking about the north, I'm sorry, I'm a Nigerian, so I'll talk about the whole of Nigeria. A great implication beyond what you are talking about north, south, east, or west, is the fact that you are hitting, you are hitting at the credibility of FDIs, 
coming into this country and the concession that has been granted for the whole lot of the hapless people. Let's assume now, this is an assumption, that things are going to be done adequately and finally. You are eroding that. It's aching in my mind to a child taking a stone and throwing it uh, at his own house, believing that, or throwing at the market, thinking that he's throwing stones at others, forgetting that his own household might be the first to be hit. The way we play our politics simply tells me that Nigeria is not a nation. Because if we are not a nation, we have been clubbed together and we fight all the politics <laughs> therein. How do I explain? Senator Ningi making a statement that they have hired, <laughs> they have hired um, um, experts. experts. Yeah, to look into it. They have gone as far as that. How do you explain situations where it has come out of the mouths of Nigerians that the military should come back and take over? So you, 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 you can begin to see um, various interests. Now, in respect to the North, and I, I like to put and bury this properly, Abdul Ningi cannot be speaking to the whole of the North. I know senators from the north in Kugi and in some other parts of the north have said, nay, Senator Ningi, you can't, be, you can't speak for us. The statement you are making is faulty ab issue. What is being implemented by this president, you may like him, you may dislike him, is one and only the 27.5 or 8 trillion. 27.5. trillion. Yeah. That is what we saw. That was what was presented. And that is what you have. But you are talking about 25 trillion. Your arithmetic is so wrong. Okay. So what exactly are you trying to, All right, to, to get that's, at? Uh, we have a barista, uh, Henry Akine with us uh, right now. Baris, uh, please, we'd like for you to jump into this conversation and give us your thoughts on this. All right, uh, we'd like for you to uh, put, unmute your microphone so we can hear you clearly. Please do that for us and uh, give us your thoughts. All right, well, uh, please do bear with us. We seem to be having a glitch there. Uh, Mr. Akin will also like you to bear, to bear with us. We'll take a quick break and uh, give our engineers a f you know, some, some seconds to rectify this, and then we'll get back to this conversation. We'll be back in a bit. Stay with us.
where your morning starts. Make sure to look around for the right company to serve you everything you need to know about what's happening around you. That's why you need VOP this morning because we will climb this far to give you a voice in what's going on from news, reviews, politics and the economy, sports and even entertainment. Join us weekdays 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. right here on VOP TV. And uh, welcome back. We do apologize for that. Now let's uh, let's get uh, Barrister Henry Akini into uh, this conversation. Good morning to you, Barrister. Welcome. Uh, we've been. I'm sure you followed the conversation all through. Let's get your thoughts in. Well, we can't exactly hear you. I Okay, I think that's, uh, that has to do with uh, the microphone now. Oh, well. Oh, well. Unfortunately, uh, we'll have to stay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, uh, Mr. Ake, at this point, it's quite interesting that this is not about the first time in our political space that we would hear issues like padding of the budget coming up to us as Nigerians. Now, my question is very direct. Do you believe that there is the need for increased transparency uh, in, other, in our budgetary uh, uh, processes, in order for us not to have these kind of discrepancies anymore, because it's becoming one too many, uh, owing to the fact that there are antecedents that follows this kind of situation. Do we need more transparency? Yes. Do we need more accountability? Yes. In fact, the best of the best that you can have anywhere, anytime, we still need some measure of controls. I want to believe, David, unlike your statement, that um, so that we avoid this kind, mm. no, there's no other kind, we have a budget that has been approved signed into law, endorsed by joint sitting of the National Assembly, and we are implementing. We do not have two budgets. However, David, you are, you are right to the nines in saying the process of building this budget needs to be more transparent. Of course. Why did we in the first place, began to see the fact that uh, the budget items that we saw um, was talking about um, the yacht. It's a measure of transparency that has been injected to the, to the system. And thereby, yeah, I don't mind, it's my friend, so let me, let me declare that up front. The DG's Office of Budget and Control has been very, very transparent before now. Do you know how many yaks upon yaks times 10 over, over the period, even at the time when we had, um, God bless his soul, Adewale Kuye? Back in the day, in the days of the military, even in the last 20 years, do you know how much has been padded over time? And I am down there therefore saying, I hope that will be a thing of the past. How did we get to know, for instance, that this president is making a budget to revamp houses in Lagos? Was that a priority? if not for the transparency. And so, Ben Akabweze and his group in the presidency, who have, over the time, worked so hard to do what we call bottoms up. So, Fina, don't just come with any number. I want to know what number you have for your microphone, for your very beautiful wig, for your lipsticks. 
go down those lines. Let's know what. So it's not being broken down and it's not being made opaque. After you have done all that, there should not be a compromise. So Fina and Moses should not now come together to short circuit the system. Okay. That is the reason why we have the office of the accountant general, the auditor general, right. who are supposed to, to be auditing. My belief is that that is a thing of the past. What we are seeing on this budget thing is pure politics. What I'm seeing is a situation where the people that you want to ruffle the, the, the waters on are uh, very clear, are very clear about what is really happening. And the more we begin to play politics with Nigeria, it therefore means, and that's where I will agree with Fina and you, and perhaps Moses, if we have to continue to play this politics, then we are not one. So let's go on our different ways. So you do it the way you want to do. I do the way. Nigeria has become so unwieldy, and, that, and that, any that, attempt that brings us to the conversation. Any of, attempt, uh, of, uh, any attempt to do what mm. is right is going to face resistance. All right, pure okay. and simple. Okay. Okay. I, I was going to just ask. Now he said, I'm talking about Senator Ningi, mm -hmm. that experts were the ones that uncover this padding. Let's for a second assume that this is some truth there's some there's some level of truth in this where does that now l put the heart of nigerians and the trust for this government and of course the senators let's assume but not consider that experts <laughs> How would experts even be looking no, no, at hang after on. it's been approved? <laughs> so, no, 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 hang on, hang on, no. Okay, go on. Yes, it may have been approved. Other the, parties, Senate, the Senate did not do a good job. Other parties, other parties can now begin to now then look at it and say, what was the undercover thing that you as a Senate did? Hmm. And that goes to what we are trying to say here, that you haven't done a good job. So one of the senators now decides to wake up, go look for experts to undermine the integrity of that Senate smells of politics, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so I am not really prepared. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm really not prepared to begin to see, um, I don't want to use the word gutter, you know, I mean, on Kut's language. Okay. If there is a problem and you do not believe in what the institution that you belong to, even if you don't belong to that institution, have you done all the things that needs to be done? Now watch something. And that's why I'm telling you politics. So after making all the fools and the cries, the Northern Senators now will be meeting with the President. We'll be meeting with the President. Yeah. What is that telling you? Need to it's telling you something simple. We in the north are not pleased. We are doing sabu rattle. We are not happy about certain things and stuff like that. We decide to put that on to draw a kind of attention. We need a concession here. Okay, we need now, a concession now, there. I would like for us to take a little look at uh, uh, the campaign uh, promises of uh, of the of the uh, you know the um, the incumbent government yes yes uh, during the campaign and uh, looking at this in line with um, the possible expectation from the north I say possible expe expectation uh, now during campaign president Tinubu promised to provide a trained and disciplined anti-terrorist battalion he also promised to upgrade tactical communication and transportation for security agents. He promised upgrade a uh, weapon system to ensure security agents are capable of addressing security threats and recruiting of people who possess the technical skills required for today's military. Uh, the, the, all, the president also talked about re reducing dependency on imported foreign military equipment exploit aerial technological superiority 
improve salaries of security agents, rehabilitate economic systems affected by violent groups, secure national infrastructure, seek international collaboration, and reposition the police. I had to uh, streamline this to 10. 10 campaign promises. So far, it's been, what, nine months plus now? Would you, would you say, well, how well do you, would, you, would you say this, this government has gone in implementing some of these uh, 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 campaign, uh, you know, the, the promises made? How well? And uh, would you say the North is aggrieved that some of these things are not met? Could that be a reason why the Northern uh, um, senators are aggrieved here? Are we talking about state police today in this country? Has this president not come out and say, state police, let's start the process? Oh, so. Has this president not within in and out looked for collaboration? One of the things you read in there. International collaborations and help. Has that not happened? Is this president looking at the military? Have we seen the budgets of the military, the core military, and how that has been enhanced over time, over last year? It will be incontinent to say he has not made an attempt now. If you now then say, what degree? Is it 5%, 10%, 15% in nine months? What kind of percentage are you looking at? Don't also forget that you cannot eat your cake and have it. While he was making those promises, one of the things that this president and other presidential candidates of the major parties realize is that if you are making a promise, you've got to look for money to make, to excuse me, up. to back it up. Part of the monies are going to come from concessional loans, which this administration has gotten. Some of these promises are going to be made by making sure you reduce arbitrage in foreign exchange, which is an attempt that we are all crying about now. This president, like others, said, look, they are going to have a look at this corrupt subsidy regime that has now brought in more money into FIAC and some other areas. We are all still groaning. This president has also indicated, you know, because in what you read, something to do with employment. Agreed! Mm -hmm. And food security was given a special place. Is that not more for the attention of the North? As far as I'm concerned, they continue to be work in progress. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, yes, you may say implementation. It has started okay. on second day or third day since May 29th. This president came out and we all saw it and he said, the security agencies, I don't want you working in silos. I need you to come together but and speak with one things, voice. All of these things doesn't seem to have quailed the, uh, sure the, 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 the insecurity in the north. It but does. Well, no, 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 no. Not just insecurity in the north. Mm. Insecurity in Nigeria. Yeah, because we are talking about the kinetic security mm. situation. Okay. There are so many other soft parts of it. The terrorists that we are having, the bandits that we are having. Mm. Is that not a business? Oh, yes. So yes. it has become something that is becoming self immolating okay. Something that is becoming self, uh, in, in a way. And so right. it has to now time. be We're something. Time. But we'd also like to get, uh, uh, we'd love to have uh, one of our virtual guests, uh, you know, chime in into uh, this conversation. Barrister Henry, please, if you can hear me, uh, go I ahead. I can hear. And, yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Give us your thoughts. Lump everything you have to say together. Let's, let's, let's take your view in as, uh, in as much time as we can before we go into the second topic because we are pressed for time. It's not a question about the north or the south or the east or the west. 
uh, with respect to the budgets of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is clear that the National Assembly um, has the constitutional power uh, to control public funds. And then um, also uh, the, the legislative powers of the National Assembly, like every other legislature, uh, is done through bills. So the executive has presented and laid before the National Assembly um, um, the, the appropriation bill. And then like the guest in the studio had actually mentioned, that bill had gone through the legislative process of first reading, second reading, committee stage, where we were, we have been in this country, and then we experienced where ministries, departments, and agencies, and then the heads of these departments, ministries, and agencies have been invited to the National Assembly at various committee levels, uh, scrutinized the appropriation bill. All right. Okay. Uh, it's uh, network issues. Well, you do know. Even uh, in, in Kaduna, where um, kidnappers, uh, you know, shepherd away those over 200, 200 uh, students, mm -hmm. we, were, we, were, we were told mm -hmm. that the area is such that to make a call is a problem. Network yeah. is, I mean, for you to get network sometimes, you need to I go definitely. to uh, the mountain top mm -hmm. to receive network. And, you know, that just brings to the fore the issue of coverage, network around providers, coverage around the country. Uh, it's, it's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So uh, calls can go through. Well, when we talked about um, uh, kidnappers and bandits using, uh, using phones and the issue of NIN and SIM linkage, what came to mind is they might be using satellite phones. Sorry. There is that possibility. I mean, if they, if they have access to weapons, you know, expensive weapons, they might also have access to satellite phones. So if you're not putting people under pressure to, to register NIN and SIM as a way of curbing insecurity, that might not even solve the problem. Oh, well, uh, we're done with this conversation. We'll probably will get, uh, there was a network problem there that made it difficult for Barrister Henry Ikina to drop his, his views. But we'll, uh, uh, if we can establish contact uh, before the end of the program, we'll get uh, his concluding thoughts uh, on some of these issues discussed. This the first and the second that we're going into in about uh, a minute now. Next on our radar, Bishop Onayekon Oni of Ife Bath's transition to parliamentary system of government. We'll discuss this after a discreet break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 